हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर सुरेंद्र कौर प्रोफेसर खालसा कॉलेज ऑफ एजुकेशन रंजीत एवेन्यू अमृतसर वेल स्टूडेंट्स टूडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक कम्युनिटी बेस्ड स्ट्रक्चर्स फॉर स्कूल गवर्नेंस द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ द टॉपिक आर एक्सप्लेन द मीनिंग और कंसेप्ट ऑफ स्कूल गवर्नेंस elucidate the meaning or concept of community based structures discuss the role of main stakeholders in governance enumerate the structure of various communities and discuss the role of community based structure in school governance community structures are an important feature of any social biological and technological networks Community detection and analysis is an important methodology for understanding the organization of various real world levels. The success of every school depends on the way it is managed. The need for the efficient management of the schools has placed much more emphasis on nature and quality of the work of the head as the leader of the team of professional educators and as the manager of the supply and effective use of resources that is human financial and material the head therefore needs to gain clear understanding of all the forces and factors which contribute towards governance of the school the public private partnership plays a significant role in school governance and gives strengthening to education system now first of all we will discuss about the meaning of school governance the word governance means the process of decision making and the process by which decisions are implemented or not implemented governance can be used in several context such as school governance local governance and corporate governance but here we will focus only in on school governance school governance involves making decisions on goals and aims and objectives for the progress of school management strategies how things should be done formulation of policies plans and budgets accountability and reporting mechanisms information sharing systems power relations in the running of the school allocation utilization and generation of resources determination and enforcement of the rules procedures and guidelines stakeholders participation and community school relations curriculum content and delivery approaches learning and teaching resources there are certain characteristics of good school governance which we will discuss one by one first of all participation participation by the parents teachers community members and pupils is a key cornerstone of good school governance so their participation in all school activities should be encouraged second one is rule of law good school governance requires fair legal frameworks that are enforced impartially it also requires promotion and protection of human rights third one is transparency transparency means that decision taken and their enforcement are done in a manner that follows rules and regulations of the school it also means that information is freely available and directly accessible to those who will be affected by such decisions and their enforcement for example parents teachers pupils and sponsors responsiveness good school governance requires that school organs and processes try to serve all stakeholders especially parents teachers 
and pupils within a reasonable time frame next is consensus oriented good school governance requires mediation of the different interest in school to reach a broad consensus on what is in the best interest of the whole school community and how this can be achieved next is equity and inclusiveness ensuring that all members of the school community feel that they have a stake in it and don't feel excluded from any mainstream this requires all groups but particularly the most vulnerable to have opportunities to improve or maintain their well being next is effectiveness and efficiency the concept of efficiency in the context of school governance also covers the suitable use of resources and protection of the environment next is accountability in general an organization or an institution is accountable to those who will be affected by its decisions or actions as we have discussed the meaning of school governance and its characteristics now i will explain composition of school governing council with the help of flow chart school governing council consists of internal and external stakeholders in internal stakeholders there are students students organizations parents of students parents associations in schools etc and in external stakeholders it includes various government and non government agencies alumni parents of alumni and etc now we will focus on major participants or stakeholders who play important role in school governance in education the term stakeholder typically refers to anyone who is invested in the welfare and success of a school and its students including administrators teachers staff members students parents families community members local business leaders and elected officials such as school board members city councillors and state representatives stakeholders may also be collective entities such as local businessmen organizations committees media outlets and cultural institutions in addition to organization that represent specific groups such as teachers unions parent teacher organizations and associations representing superintendents principals school boards or teachers in specific academic discipline in a word stakeholders have a stake in the school and its students meaning that they have personal professional civic or financial interest or concern the major participants in school governance are there are so many major participants in school governance that is headmaster or head teacher the headmaster is the key to a well managed school a motivated and highly committed head of the school can and does make a big difference a combination of a good headmaster and a team of good teachers is the ultimate formula of a well managed sensitive and engaged school next one is parents parents involvement and partnership includes accepting obligations responsibilities and participating in education and activities within the school these may include parent supporting their child's schooling by attending school functions and responding to school obligations helping their children 
improve school work by encouragement arranging appropriate study time and space and monitoring homework playing roles in governance and making decisions on planning and development of the school and education next is community also plays important role by building stronger links between school and the community the benefits of having a school will be shared while at the same time community members will feel more ownership of the school itself a joint community school meeting could be held to discuss these issues this could then inspire a discussion how they would like to see the school used to serve the local community thinking how they could feel ownership of the school while extending their own learning experiences next is school managing committees and parents teacher associations in general terms school managing committee have a role in school governance in policy making planning and budgetary allocations they involve a range of people including local community members education officers head teachers parents and local government representatives among others on the other hand parent teacher association tend to help with the resource mobilization running social events for parents and pupils running clubs for extra curricular activities for example sports or music organize meetings to inform parents about educational issues next is ngos and community based organizations civil society institutes non government organizations and community based organizations are the main stakeholders of school governance and play an important role in the quality management community based organizations are non profit groups that work at the local level to improve life for residents the focus is to build equality across society in all streams that is health care environment quality of education access to technology access to spaces and information for the disabled organizing people into groups has wide ranging advantages to the community in the specific and society in general once the people are organized they can be made actively aware as regard to their rights contributions responsibilities and so on now we will focus on what is community based structure and its role in school governance education takes place not only in schools but also within families communities and society despite the various degree of responsibilities taken by each group none can be the sole agent to take 100% responsibility for educating their children parents and families cannot be the only group of people for children's education as long as their children interact with and learn from the world outside their families communities and society must support parents and families in the upbringing socializing and educating of their children schools are institutes that can prepare children to contribute to the betterment of the society in which they operate by equipping them with the skills important in society schools cannot and should not operate as a separate entities within the society 
Community can be defined by characteristics that the members share such as culture, language, tradition, law, geography, class and race. Some communities are homogeneous while others are heterogeneous and some are united while others conflictive. Some communities are governed and managed by leaders which are chosen by the people themselves and some are governed by the leaders imposed from above and represent central authorities. There are three aspects of communities. First, community is a group structure whether formally or informally organized in which members play roles which are integrated around goals associated with the problems from collective occupation and utilization of habitation space. Second, members of the community have some degree of collective identification with the occupied space. Lastly, the community has a degree of local autonomy and responsibility. There are basically three different types of communities. The first one is geographic community which is defined according to its members place of residence such as village or district. Geographic community is that type of community which has physical boundaries by which we can make it distinct or separate such as a river, a street etc. Within a geographic community you will find both communities of identity and community of interest. The second type is ethnic, racial and religious identification and commonly cuts across membership based on geographic location. The third one is communities based on shared family or educational concerns which include parents association and similar bodies that are based on families shared concern for the welfare of the students. Now the question arises that how can we improve the education with the help of community? The answer is first of all by maximizing limited resources. Learning materials as well as human resources are limited everywhere particularly in developing countries. The focus has shifted to find efficient and effective ways to utilize existed limited resources with the help of community there can be increase in resources. Communities provide local knowledge to their children. Parents are usually concerned about their children's education and often are willing to provide assistance that can improve the educational delivery. In places where teacher absenteeism and poor performance are very critical issues. Parents can be the part of the system of monitoring and supervising teachers ensuring that teachers arrive at classroom on time and perform effectively in the classroom. Second is developing relevant curriculum and learning material. Community and parents involvement help in developing curriculum and learning material that reflect children's everyday lives in a society. When children use textbooks and other materials that illustrate their own lives in their community, they can easily associate what they are learning with what they have already known. Local craft, jobs and economic activities, health problems, geography, landscapes, transport, sports, dance, food, animals, vegetation and minerals 
are also described and classified for the use in learning experiences. Next is identifying and addressing problems. Now we will discuss ki what type of problems we have to identify and address. Communities can help to identify and address factors that contribute to educational problems such as low participation and poor academic performance of the students. Next is promoting girls education which is very important. Community participation can contribute to promote girls education. Through participating in school activities and frequently communicating with teachers, parents and communities can learn that girls education contributes to the improvement of various aspects of their lives such as increased income is one, productivity is also very important, improved family health and nutrition reduced fertility rates and reduced child mortality rates involving parents and communities in discussions as part of school activities also help to identify factors that prevent girls from schooling. Next is creating and nourishing community school partnership. There are various ways to bring parents and community members closer to school which they serve like minimizing discontinuities between schools and communities, between school and families, minimizing conflicts between schools and communities, schools and families, teachers and parents and what is taught in the school and, it, and what is taught at home. Making easy transition of pupils going from one place to another place that is from home to school and preparing pupils to engage in learning experiences. Communities can contribute to schools by sending respected community members such as religious leaders or tribe heads to the classrooms and talk about community, history, traditions, customs, culture, value and so on all which are based on value oriented which have been historically celebrated in the community. Schools themselves can contribute to community efforts by developing sustainable solutions to local problems. Next is increasing accountability. Parental involvement in education particularly in school governance is seen as a mean of making schools more accountable to the society which funds them. The teachers and other school staff feel that they should be accountable to community only when the community holds some power over them. They also argue that accountability is developed through routine parents meetings and reporting systems on students progress. When parents contribute their time, labor, material, land and funds, they tend to be more involved in school activities including participating in meetings with teachers and monitoring teachers performance. Teachers and school staff in turn feel more obliged to deliver better education for the students in order to respond to the needs of the parents and communities. Next is improving home environment which is also very important. Community participation can contribute to preparing and improving home environment by encouraging parents to understand about the benefits of their children's schooling. We know that families are aware of the importance of education and can contribute much to their children's learning achievement even in disadvantaged districts. 
families who are involved in schools not only have a better understanding about education but also become more willing to cooperate with schools in attempt to improve children's learning now let's focus on community structures community structures are quite common in real networks social networks include community groups the origin of the term in fact based on common location interest occupation etc community based structures are informal social network ties which are a part of social capital which here means child health and education since the future of the country depends upon its human capital there is a need to focus on its qualitative development community based structures are generally membership organizations consisting of group of individuals in a self defined community who have joined together to further common interest they often consist of people living in close proximity to each other the common interest includes production consumption pooled resources or delivery of services organizations such as women groups youth clubs cooperative groups religious groups caste associations and local ngos all of these are included in community based structures now major characteristics of community based structure are as such like these groups are formed and managed by people at the local level without any interference from government agencies these organizations work in close cooperation with local and are important players in local development process the activities involve satisfying the needs of rural communities and the seasons are reached mainly through face to face interactions these organizations are established and managed by members largely and the development activities too are performed by the members themselves promoting government community partnership at the grassroots level empowering the community by delegating management and supervision of government schools to sum up i would like to say that this topic discusses the concept of community based structures for school governance the success of every school depends on the way it is managed the need for the efficient management of schools has played much more emphasis on the nature and quality of the work of the head as the leader of the team of professional educators the public private partnership plays a significant role in school governance also and gives strengthening to education system good school governance has certain characteristics like participation rule of law transparency responsiveness equity and inclusiveness effectiveness and efficiency and accountability stakeholders also play an important role in school governance in education the term stakeholder typically refers to anyone who is invested in the welfare and success of a school and its students including administrators teachers staff members students parents families community members local business leaders and elected officials such as school board members city councillors and state representatives also all these stakeholders play an important role depending on their capabilities interest and needs 
These stakeholders are the important constituent forming substructures of the main social structure. Thus, identifying the substructures within a network can provide insight into how network function and topology affect each other. These are informal social network ties which are a part of social capital can bring about this participatory development collective action formed by memberships in these structures and informal social network ties drives household decisions as micro and macro levels for the better or for the worse. Since the future of the country depends its human capital, there is a need to focus on its qualitative development. Thank you.